Hello everyone, Fluffy Armchair Admiral here with another episode of Train Driver 2 um, and as you requested uh, today I will be showing you how to operate EU07 class locomotives. Uh, why am I calling this a class? Even though the game features multiple different EU and EP07s, it's basically the same family which falls into EU07. They all pretty much operate in the same way. The difference between them two is very, very small. Uh, basically EU07 uh, or EU class uh, stands for electric universal locomotives. Uh, while EP stands for electric passenger locomotives. Uh, so you can basically guess what they are used for. Um, in basics, EU can be pulling either passenger trains or freight trains, while EP uh, locomotives are used only for passenger services. Uh, and that's basically the difference. Well, the difference is in construction as well. Uh, so they they have different engines and uh, different uh, top speeds. And that's why EP class was born or EP locomotives was born because they eventually all fall into EU07 family. Uh, each locomotive with different numbers will operate slightly different. Uh, they might have slightly different panels, but general principle and general uh, like uh, operating procedure is exactly the same for all of them. So I will show this on example of EU07 uh, with number of 418 that you can uh, use in Train Driver 2. And I hope you will enjoy this small video. In the meantime, while starting the locomotive, I will also explain a few things about systems that you can find in, uh, in those engines. And at the end, I will showcase you one of the uh, multiplayer sessions that, uh, that I've been playing recently. However, that last part of the video will be without any commentary. Uh, so I will put timestamps uh, underneath the video in, in video description for you. Uh, so you can basically jump into desired part of the video. Whether you would like to hear how to turn on these locomotives and how to operate them or not is up to you. Right, so let's get started. Uh, let me switch to the game window. Uh, sorry for that loud sound. Right, so here we are in, in the cabin of EU07 locomotive, uh, number uh, 418. Uh, as you can see, that's, that's the screen you will see uh, when you start the game. Uh, if you select a cold start, the locomotive will be in exactly this state. So, how to start this bad boy? First of all, we need to switch cabins. We are currently in cabin A, uh, which is always the cabin that you will start the game in. However, in order to turn this bad boy on, we need to head on to cabin B. So turn your camera and press on these doors. Um, just click it with left mouse button. Uh, you will jump into cabin B. As you can see, we can see our consist, which is not connected to the train. I will explain how to do that later. Right, you can move your camera with WSAD buttons. Basically, you can move around the cabin. Uh, you can also adjust the camera wherever you want and lock it with Control 1 combination. This way, whenever you move the camera and press one button uh, on, on top of your uh, uh, typing keyboard, you will go back to the same position uh, or same camera position that you locked. Anyway how to turn it on. So, turn on the master switch, which is located here. It's always in the same place. When you turn on the master switch, set your reverser to forward. You can use page up and page down buttons to do so. So, as you set it up, then open the fuse box, which is located next to the panels, right here. And then, well, you can guess it, uh, you have to turn on the main fuse, which is here. As you can hear, that triggered the batteries, which reported on low uh, low voltage voltmeter, and turned on uh, 
the automatic uh, warning system basically two of those systems because we got a uh, dead man's vigilance device and automatic warning systems and they all uh, act uh, as part of train protection and warning system you can reset them using space button okay that that's much better isn't it <laughs> anyway uh, when you did that uh, you need to set your reverser back to neutral and turn off the master switch for now we won't need this cabin anymore uh, if you are planning to connect to this consist you can also turn on the left front light in this cabin which turns on the light that is located somewhere in in this area anyway let's get back to cabin a right so in order to continue turning on this locomotive we obviously need to repeat the process so turn on the master switch set reverser to forward and then raise the pantographs where you can find them well on the front panel these are pantographs A which is on top of this cabin and B which is on top of the second cabin when you raise them you probably notice that high voltage voltmeter is now reporting that it's receiving around 3.5 kilovolts of electricity which is very good that is something that we want right so now we need to reset converter overload relay which is located here that's this button then we need to reset engine overload relay which is this button and it represents those two lights if they light up that means you have to reset it uh, i'll i'll show you the proper procedure of resetting it later and then we need to press and hold fast switch on button until green light indicator turns on which is this one this one is fast switch indicate uh, fast switch off button if you want to turn it on uh, if you want to turn it off so we pressed it the green light came up if you want to turn it off just press the red button and you turn it off we obviously want to turn it on right when we did that we need to turn on the converter why is that well uh, it's because uh, the voltage in main line is 3000 volts while uh, some of our equipment is using 110 volts that way we need to convert some of that voltage wait a little bit uh, before turning on the next equipment which is uh, the compressor and the switch for it is located right, right next to a converter switch on button if you turn it too fast you will turn uh, you will trigger the overload and it will light up this red light i'll show you that in a second so let's turn it off let's wait for converter to turn off fully oh yeah 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 that sound is is really annoying right it should now be turned off so if you turn on the compressor too quickly after turning on converter you might overload it as you can see we just overloaded it and unfortunately the locomotive won't start so we need to turn it off both uh, turn off uh, both converter and compressor reset converter overload relay and then start the locomotive again right let's go through the right procedure there we go when you turn on the compressor you look at this dial you need to wait for the pressure to go up to eight bars which is which is indicated by this line it is basically pumping air into main reservoir until then well we just have to wait in the meantime 
you can set your reverser to neutral and set train brake to drive position which is button 4 on numerical keyboard obviously it's it should be set by default but in case you moved it for example pushed it to further positions or engaged the brakes you can reset it with that number 4 button it is now correctly set you can also set your independent brake which is located here into drive position uh, which it is right now where the lever handle is pointing forward uh, you can operate it with uh, number, uh, numerical keyboard buttons 1 to uh, to increase the braking power or button number 7 to release it right uh, finally we need to press and hold brake release button for a few seconds you can do it in two ways you can use the front panel which is this green button or you can use uh, button number 6 on your numerical keyboard and as you can see on, on those dials it pumped in the pressure into main pipe and it pumped out the pressure from brake cylinders which means that the train is now not braking effectively and obviously after that you can reapply the independent brake to keep the locomotive in place and that's basically how you start the locomotive. It's now ready to drive. Right. So. Let's now con uh, connect our consist. First of all, we need to set our lights for maneuvers. Uh, there is a proper procedure for that. Uh, you basically have to set the lights on both ends of the locomotive. Uh, to bright uh, white light. At the side of active cabin. So, as you probably remember, while we were starting the locomotive, I turned on the left bright light on the cabin B, or underneath the cabin B. Which basically means uh, that I already did half of the job. In this cabin, you need to set the white right light, which is this dial. When you turn it on, the light that is underneath the cabin is lighting up white and the, uh, the white light on the left side uh, of the other cabin which is exactly opposite is also white at the moment oh let me just close the doors right so that is a correct way to setting it up this way when you are moving and maneuvering around uh, the sidings everyone who approaches you from various different directions knows where you are sitting in your locomotive uh, so if they notice that the locomotive is moving backwards with uh, the uh, the light on opposite side of the cabin that's that you would expect then they know that the driver can't for example observe their surrounding because you are just reversing and you are looking in different direction than direction of travel uh, they can then predict how to act uh, or act accordingly um, so that's that's the information for everyone around where you are exactly sitting right anyway we need to set our reverser to backwards which turns on uh, the line connectors which is indicated by the green light this means that the, uh, the locomotive is ready to drive basically uh, we also need to release all brakes, so let's release independent brake using button 7 on numerical keyboard. As you can see, brake pressure in brake cylinders fall down to zero. And then we can turn throttle regulator to position 1. And regulate your speed accordingly until you connect with your consist. You will feel that when the locomotive will suddenly stop. There we go. Uh, I think the locomotive jumped out a little bit, but that's not a problem. Uh, because in order to keep it connected with the consist, you have to turn on regulator to position 1. 
this is now pushing the locomotive towards the consist but it doesn't give enough power to the engines to actually push the consist away because consist has its own brakes right now reapply independent brake and then release the throttle in order to not overload uh, the resistors right and that's basically it now we have to jump off the cabin because unfortunately those locomotives don't use automatic couplers we need to couple them manually so you run into uh, the desired uh, wagon as you can see the buffers are connected and we we are being prompted to press left mouse button uh, if we want to couple the consist so if we do that everything is done automatically we don't have to do anything else uh, we can also press left mouse button to decouple the train uh, if we want to move away and as you can see uh, rear left light is still uh, li lit up right uh, that's the sound of a compressor don't worry about it uh, you can also run to the other end of your consist and make sure that the rear lights are turned on uh, you have to turn them on manually by switching them on or off so let's run up here that's the end of our consist and those are end signals you can turn them on or off by pressing left mouse button right when you are done with that just press f11 to jump back into your cabin and as you can see we are held on brakes and the last thing you have to do is to set your reverser to neutral in order to be able to jump to cabin b and you probably guessed it in cabin b we need to turn off the white light that was flashing on on this side right let's jump to uh, let's jump back to cabin A. Let's reset our camera. And the train is basically ready for maneuvers. Right. There are a few additional things that you can turn on in this cabin. Uh, before we drive, we can talk about them. So, first of all, you can turn on uh, the gorgeous uh, or gauges light uh, or backlit. You can do that by flicking this switch you can also slightly adjust its brightness if you feel that this one is too bright you can reduce it by flicking this switch or you can just leave it off I personally prefer to just keep it on right you can also turn on the cabin light and you got two switches for that you can use switch on this panel or switch on this panel if it's present in here uh, some locomotives might not have this switch anyway you can also slightly adjust the brightness of cabin light by flicking this switch and as you can see it's got a little bit uh, darker or you can just turn it off if you don't need it right uh, basically that's all we need to use uh, most of the rest uh, well uh, most of those switches are just placeholders and they won't work this switch even though you can switch it is effectively doing nothing because the game doesn't simulate any weather conditions and that's uh, windshield heating this one is heating of the cabin and it's indicated by this blue light if it's switched on and this one is for some sort of reserve i'm not sure what it does exactly uh this switch will turn on the lights in oh, high voltage cabin which is basically here it contains all the switches and all those relays all that electric uh box that is uh present for this locomotive uh, it also contains uh, resistors for uh, track engines uh, however you don't have access to to this place anyway Oop. oh my goodness me those doors are really tricky uh, so basically 
there is no use for uh, for that switch as well it's just a placeholder you can turn it on you can turn it off it's up to you it it doesn't do anything in the game at the moment right uh, there are also a few other switches that you can uh, flick and they actually do something so you can reduce brightness of this alerter lights uh, accordingly so for SHP system or AWS system which will be I think external lights yes those are external lights uh, and internal lights which is for Deadman's uh, vigilance device uh, those are two separate systems however they work similarly if you fail to react to it and reset them the train will be bring, uh, brought to a stop how does it exactly work so that man's vigilance device will start monitoring your attention every 60 seconds from the moment when your locomotive reaches 10 percent of its uh, maximum speed so maximum speed uh, or design speed for eu07 locomotives is 120 kilometers per hour which means that as soon as you hit 12 kilometers per hour Deadman's Vigilance device should prompt you to react and it should do so every 60 seconds. AWS system is a point attention check system. It is mounted on the tracks and it's working with the locomotive. So when you reach certain point of the track, which is very crucial for, uh, for attention, obviously regardless of that uh, Deadman's Vigilance system, you have to also react to uh, SHP or AWS. Uh, this is meant to, to be like a mm, secondary security to make sure that even though you just reset Deadman's Vigilance and something bad happens to, to you as a driver and you can't keep your attention on the track, the train will be stopped before, for example, hitting uh, the train station if, if you are running at speed and you have to for example and you are approaching station uh, if there is 60 seconds gap between next check it might be 60 seconds too late so there are points on the track that will prompt you regardless of deadman's vigilance device and that basically uh, consists large part of uh, train protection and warning system uh, there is also uh, one last device that needs to be uh, manually used in case you as a driver spot any danger on the track and you need to stop uh, entire traffic in the area. It is called radio stop. You initiate it by pressing F7 button. And as you can see on your chat, if you press it uh, once, you get prompted that if you press it once more, you will turn on the brakes on every locomotive including yours it's emergency brake uh, in this area uh, so use it with uh, extreme caution uh, but if you spot any dangerous situation like uh, for example other other player passing through a uh, red signal uh, that he's not supposed to and trying to continue uh, you can press radio stop uh, to, to prevent any accidents and this will stop all the traffic on this area and dispatcher will react uh, it is worth noting that dispatchers also have access to radio stop so if they notice a prompt from the game to to actually use this uh, they will or if they notice that somebody passed a signal with a significant uh, speed uh, they will probably use it anyway uh, but if dispatcher is very busy doing some some work or trying to organize trains he might miss that signal so you as a driver can also initiate radio stop in that regards uh, or in that situation misuse of this device may cause you to be uh, kicked out of the server or a complaint might be sent on on the forums so uh, don't try to troll other players because it's very annoying when when you turn on someone's brake right and that's basically it we are ready to drive right so 
uh, welcome back uh, we are in in slightly different scenario same consist uh, I just changed this scenario because the previous one unfortunately was not set correctly and I couldn't finish explaining what's going on anyway uh, after that small bump we are back uh, I got my locomotive set up pretty much the same as as it was before and now I can explain you how to drive this thing yeah uh, so we've started our locomotive uh, we connected to our consist uh, we got it preset at the same point where we finished so we got a uh, bright light bright front light turned on uh, brakes are applied or independent brakes are applied uh, train brake is not applied at the moment and few things are turned on and off on our panel so what we need to do in uh, to properly drive a train as you can see right now we are in slightly different place we are on the siding and we got this light in front of us uh, it is a maneuvering light uh, when you start uh, especially multiplayer section those lights are also important right now this light is displaying us red signal and unfortunately as this is a single player session we won't be able to uh, to change it uh, we will have to pass it uh, on red but normally the light would change to to white and the bottom light would flash the top light would turned off uh, would be turned off and that indicates that you are uh, well that you are able to drive uh, anyway Regardless of that, we will carry on, uh, so we will pass this signal, uh, but how do you start this locomotive? Well, we've, we've started the engine, but right now we need to get it moving, isn't it? So, first of all, let's set our lights. We will be traveling uh, to different stations, we won't be stopping on, on the nearby one. So, I'm planning to get on the route straight away. Uh, in order to do so, I need to indicate that by turning on all the front lights and if we jump off the locomotive you can see all three front lights are on right let's get back to it now uh, obviously we need to also set our brake switch uh, to to match the type of consist that we are pulling so you can do that using this three-way switch Right now it's turned on to a uh, passenger train. Uh, it will react slightly different on each setting. Uh, we are running express train. So let's set it to uh, for express train. Let's reset our position at, uh, at the, uh, in the cabin. And let's carry on with rest of the procedure. Uh, so we need to set our reverser to forward because we are planning to, to drive forward and release all our brakes. So let's check the train brake uh, by pressing uh, num4 or uh, button 4 on, on numerical uh, keyboard. It is set correctly, it didn't move. Uh, in any other scenario when you applied this brake or when you moved the lever, uh, it is worth to reset it to drive position. It will then uh, turn on the correct pressure in the main pipe and uh, and adjust the brake cylinder pressure as long as independent brake is not applied you will see that on those gauges uh, gauges uh, right uh, as you can see we still got some brake cylinder pressure which probably means that yes our independent brake is applied and uh, just as we left it so let's release independent brake by pressing uh, key 7 on numerical uh, keyboard uh, we can also just to make sure uh, release the brake cylinder uh, pressure from all brakes uh, just to make sure that all brakes are released right so when that's done we can slowly adjust our throttle you can do that by pressing plus and minus on your numerical keyboard. By pressing plus button, you switch position of throttle wheel. It has 43 positions. First 28 positions, or position uh, 1 to 27, are so-called resistance driving positions. What does that mean is that the engines, uh, which are now operating in series, 
Uh, there are four engines, they are all connected in series. Uh, also uh, receive reduced uh, power because of resistors that are uh, plugged into the circuit. And by applying further positions on your throttle, you are just removing or changing the set of resistors uh, to, to reduce uh, the circuit resistance up until position number 28 which is first non-resistance position uh, let me just show it to you uh, I will probably go over speed there we go we've, we've now reached uh, position 28 which is non-resistance position as you can see uh, the red indicator on the panel turned off and the train is running much more silent right let's release the throttle uh, because we need to adjust our speed uh, by applying or releasing the throttle it is very uh, important or worth noting that the game probably doesn't simulate that uh, but if you run on resistance uh, drive for too long you might actually burn the circuits so it is very important to um, to use those positions or positions 1 to 27 for as short period of time as possible uh, the other problem that you will probably encounter is uh, overloading uh, the main circuit or engines uh, obviously while you keep applying the uh, uh, the throttle uh, you probably notice that this ammeter is starting to report that there is power going through the circuit. Uh, what does that mean? Is well, basically the engines can um, or the circuit can survive up to uh, 600 amps of power or uh, of uh, current. So uh, when you apply too much current into the circuit it will just trip uh, overload protection and it will uh, disable your throttle now you won't be able to to add any more throttle uh, and in order to reset it you will have to reset it uh, I'll, I'll show it to you when we get to, to a faster tracks like right now so let's see what will happen if I will just rapidly turn on the throttle as you can see I overloaded the engines and it tripped uh, the overload protection which is indicated by this red light. Whatever I will do on the throttle right now it is not represented on any of ammeters because I just overloaded the circuit oh, and, and the train just died. Right. How you can fix it? Release the throttle to zero position and reset uh, the overload button. As our train now turned off, which is indicated by this green light not uh, being lit up, we also need to turn on, uh, turn off converter and uh, compressor because the train is completely overloaded. And we need to turn on the locomotive back on. We can do it on fly uh, as the train is running. Now we need to turn the converter back on wait a little bit and restart the compressor to keep the pressure in our uh, in our main reservoir uh, being constantly uh, replenished and now we can again keep applying the throttle simple isn't it right when you do that you can now regulate your speed as as you see it fit so remember to to keep your uh, eyes on a meter and control how much current you are pushing into the engines right when you reach position 28 you got two options how to speed up even further you can use shunt controller by pressing slash or star button on your uh, numerical keyboard by pressing uh, slash you 
you are adding different shunt gears uh, which is represented by a left lever and as you can see by turning it in you increase engines uh, maximum rpms uh, at the cost of maximum engine power so that's that's the trade-off you are uh, making uh, you are also pushing more current into the engines so you still need to observe a meter to to not overload the circuit and there's only five positions that you can adjust the engine and that's basically it uh, when you reach position five you are giving it maximum speed that you can get from this train on this setting if you want to increase your speed even further you have to reduce shunt position to zero and you can keep applying more throttle positions if you apply one more throttle position you probably noticed that we are again on resistance driving however what you can also notice that the second ammeter turned on why is that well our engines now switch to parallel connection so there are two pairs of engines one on the front carriage and one on the rear carriage of uh, of the locomotive uh, and basically right now they are operating in parallel connection both pairs are connected in two parallels uh, and again there are resistors uh, turned on into the circuit and as you keep adding more and more positions on your throttle you are switching the sets of those resistors again when you reach last position which is position 43 or our position on uh, on your throttle you can see that with with that small arrow pointing on on our position again resistors are all turned off and you can once more keep adjusting the shunt positions in order to further increase the top speed by reducing the power and increasing engines rpms and you can basically fly this thing up to probably 120 kilometers per hour it will take some time before you reach that speed uh, but hopefully at one point you will uh, depending on the type of locomotive you are driving uh, you might go even faster uh, some of the locomotives can hit 160 kilometers per hour uh, especially uh, ep seri uh, series locomotives which are designed to pull passenger trains obviously if you want to reduce your throttle first you reduce shunt and then you reduce the throttle there we go and that's the proper way of uh, letting your train to coast right so now that we are traveling at uh, at significant speed uh, we need to figure out how to stop uh, let me get to a to another station uh, there is a high chance that uh, dummy dispatcher won't load uh, so i will probably uh, pass the red signal if needed uh, i'm not sure if if that's no dummy dispatcher has been initiated properly uh, so we don't suffer from from that error right so let's reach the next station and i will come back to you when we do so uh, to explain you a proper stopping procedure all right so here we are uh, back uh, in our train uh, we are slowly approaching next station so first uh, you have to drop your uh, your throttle to zero obviously uh, because we want to begin braking and then slowly apply brakes uh, step by step uh, watching your speed and controlling how fast you are slowing down obviously uh, that's the first position as you can see it, it's not slowing down uh, it's not slowing us down that significantly but it's a good way to eventually apply uh, pre-braking uh, we are approaching the platform as you can see platform is right in front of us if we want to regulate uh, the braking force we can apply 
further positions or completely release the brakes uh, if we if we begin to slow down too rapidly uh, regulate your speed as as you are slowing down and try to stop at the right spot on the station uh, what is the right spot well you have to observe the signs uh, at the end of the platform or close to the end of the platform you will see a specific sign that will indicate a place where to stop obviously very often you want to stop before reaching a semaphore which i failed to do which might be a little bit problematic uh, but well uh, it is what it is when you completely stop you can then reset your brakes and if you are planning to stop for longer you can apply independent brake instead to to hold train in in place uh, this way you can uh, reduce uh, the pressure in brake cylinders in all other cars except locomotive uh, it will let you drive out much faster also if you are planning longer stop for example if you get uh, 10 or 20 minutes stop you can raise a pantograph a which you should lower before uh, driving uh, on a main track or on any any direction and that's basically it um, those are basic operation or operating procedures if you want to well somewhat successfully uh, drive eu07 locomotives uh, as you can see they are not particularly hard to drive uh, but it requires a little bit of a practice if you want to stop at the right spot uh, so coming back to the right spot uh, as i explained to you before uh, there are multiple ways to check it uh, first of all if there is a semaphore at the end of the platform then obviously that's your right spot uh, if there is no semaphore at the end of the station you might see a specific signs uh, let me just reach one of them and i'll be back with you in just a second well sadly uh, some of the signs are not present on on this station however this one has one of those indicators uh, for stopping markers so this is a stop marker for a trains of a length of 150 meters uh, if your train is 150 meters long that is the correct stopping position uh, for such train so front of the train or front of your locomotive should be stopped right next to this sign preferably and then entirety of the train should fit within the platform uh, if if your train is longer you can obviously pull it closer to end semaphore if it's present or if it's not or if the semaphore is further away you will probably see a small black sign uh, it is a small square sign with uh, a white cross on it right and that basically covers uh, all the basics that you need to know in order to drive your train uh, remember to to follow uh, the proper signs and signals uh, and stay safe on your journey uh, right so right now i will show you a recording of of one of my um of one of my uh, multiplayer sessions uh, i won't be giving you any commentary during that it's just for your uh, entertainment i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did give it a like uh, press that thumbs up button uh, press the subscribe button if you want to see more of those videos and don't forget to use the bell to to get notifications whenever i upload any sort of content onto youtube and finally uh, don't forget to jump on my discord server where you can get even more information where i share some announcements regarding the channel uh, where i also uh, actively or more or less actively uh, monitor it and i'm happy to, to answer all your questions and uh, join any sort of conversation that will emerge uh, whether you want to find out more about the game uh, whether you want to make a specific request for a content that's the best place to do so uh, because i can keep everything in check out there um, 
unlike uh, YouTube, which which is getting harder and harder to monitor all the comments and all that stuff that is happening in there. Uh, so yeah, uh, jump on my Discord. Link will be in description of this video. And now, well, enjoy your ride. See you next time. Later out.